Now, this topic might seem fairly trivial, exploring the Django migration table. It's just a table with uh, five or four, sorry, fields. But it is important to understand and maybe just reflect upon because it is going to be an important part of the migration process, particularly when you start to uh, experience issues and problems with your migration files or the migration process. So in Django, the migration table, let's take a look so we can access it here in this project. The migration table is a special table named Django Migrations. You can see it right here, hopefully. Uh, maybe I don't need to uh, zoom in. I'll see if I can zoom in slightly. Okay, so the migrations, Django Migrations table. Uh, you can see, like I mentioned, it has one, two, three, four, four fields, the ID. So here, this is obviously the primary ID, auto incrementing integer field. We have the app. So this is the name of the Django app to which the migration belongs. We have the name. So that's the name of the migration file. And then we have a timestamp. Quite a simple table. Django will obviously use this to track which migrations have been applied in the database. So this table is automatically created when you run migrations for the first time in your Django project. I think we probably already gathered that the purpose of this Django migrations table is that it serves as a registry of applied migrations. It's going to keep track of which migrations have been applied to the database schema. Now, how this gets populated, of course, when you run the migrations or migrate command, Django will inspect the migrations table to determine which migrations have already been applied. It then compares the migrations listed in this table with the available migrations in your project's migrations directory and then applies any pending migrations. So let's go ahead and see if we can show this table, see what's inside. You can see that we have already applied one migration. So you can see the ID, the in this case, the app, the name, which is the initial migration, and then when it was created. As we have already started to see, Django provides a whole bunch of different management commands, which we can then uh, manipulate make changes to this table. So generally, you want to try and avoid manually modifying its contents. Altering this table, of course, can lead to inconsistencies and unexpected behavior in your Django project. Now, this table can get quite overwhelming. Over time, a Django project may accumulate a large number of migration files, and there'll be a lot of entries in this table, of course. Now, we will look at later on in this module uh, Django does provide a squash migrations command, which allows you to consolidate multiple migrations into a single migration file. And we we'll take a look at that, and that can be a good way of sometimes managing migrations and their dependencies. So in the previous tutorial, we introduced migrations, and now we're aware of the Django's migration table. Like what I mentioned in the previous tutorial, now we have an introduction to this table, we can now start to explore and utilize it when we move into deeper content. 